Hello students and welcome to this calculus lesson. In this video, we're going to start learning about optimization. How do you optimize certain things? How do you maximize what you want to happen? Or how do you maximize profits or maximize volume? Or how do you minimize risk? These are things that you say, but calculus can actually help you solve it. So today we're actually gonna start learning how to solve these problems and we're gonna solve one together. So let's get started. So there's a general approach to solving optimization problems. Of course, I don't go through these five steps every single time that I'm doing any of these problems, but um, these are good kind of guidelines that you want to be following. So the first guideline that I want you guys to follow is that I want you to determine the quantity that is going to be maximized or minimized. Once you have an idea of what you actually want to maximize or minimize in a certain situation, you actually know like, okay, this is my goal. This is what I need to get to, or this is what I need to answer. So now the next thing, what's the next rule? So that I, it's not always necessary and not always going to do it, but sometimes it's really gonna help me come up with formulas that aren't really apparent. So I'm gonna say that you should sketch a picture or write down the statements that identify the variables or quantities that aren't valued here. So what I mean by things that aren't valued or variables that you don't know, or that I'm really just kind of looking at, okay, you know, what's the information that's given? And maybe there's another piece of information that I can use, okay? So there's not a strict value for it, but I could probably use that in a way that could aid me in maximizing or minimizing what I'm trying to find. So now what's the next thing that we want to look at? Well, I want you to write the primary equation that represents the quantity that is going to be optimized. It's always a good place to start. It's like, this is what I want to find, okay? And then we're going to work with some things after that. And just keep in mind that the equation might contain more than one variable or might contain, you know, different things or could contain like three variables. And so you really want to keep track that the equation that you're writing originally may or may not be something that you're going to be using later. So again, when we're looking at like, okay, the primary equation, again, it starts with your goal. Okay, what am I trying to find that, you know, as I'm solving a lot of like these pre-response questions, it's always, okay, what do I need to find? What are my answers? Okay, what am I given? And how do I connect those things? Okay, this is kind of like those three steps. And this is, you know, writing that main goal initially is always gonna be really helpful. So now what's like the next part that we wanna find? So just keep in mind that if the primary equation contains more than one variable, you're going to need a secondary equation. The reason we do this is that it, it can be written to show the relationship between the two variables so that you're gonna want to substitute that in after. So you're gonna have one equation, you're gonna have a second equation, you're gonna substitute, you're gonna solve for a variable and you're gonna substitute it into that primary equation so that you can solve for what you wanna solve for. And again, you're not going to see me do this in every single problem, but you know, if necessary, this is going to be a crucial step, especially in optimization problems. And then finally, the, the last step where the calculus is actually going to come in is take the derivative. Verify that what you're finding, the, ver the, the values that you find, that they're going to be the max or the min, whatever you're trying to find, and the way you're going to do that is using a sign chart analysis. Make sure you use that proper because statement because the derivative changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. All right, so now let's actually start looking at this in example one, kind of going through these steps. Um, what, what are the expectations as you're working through these problems? So we have a manufacturer who wants to design an open box having a square base and a surface area of 108 square inches. So, okay, I know I'm given surface area, uh, an open box, that's gonna be pretty important. And I, I remember the first time I was doing this problem and I was like, I wasn't getting the correct answer is because of this open box idea. And then uh, a square base, so that's other useful information. So what dimensions will produce a box with maximum value? So we're giving dimensions, so something like length and width um, and height, because we're looking for volume and we want maximize that volume. So we want to maximize that volume and we want to say, okay, what is the maximum volume? So there's two questions here. We need to be able to answer both. So then what, okay, what, what do we want to do with this? So like I said, the very first thing that I want to do is kind of, draw a box and I'm no artist, but here I go. All 
All right, and so that's, you know, that's a box that I came up with. It's gonna be pretty good to visualize this, okay? So one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm kinda gonna, gonna shade in this top part. And the reason I'm doing that is only to keep in mind, all right, that's not part of the surface area. It is an open box. It's not like a full cube. We also have a square base. So since it's a square base, I know that X times X is gonna make up the area of that square base. And the height is going to be some sort of Y value. I'm using Y or I could use H. Okay, so how do I find volume of this? Because I want to maximize the volume. So I want to start with, all right, how do I actually find the volume? Well, that's going to be length times width times height. So length times width is X times X or X squared times the height, which is times Y. So X squared Y. So that's what I've got so far. And then the next thing is, okay, you know, I see two variables here. I want to find the maximum volume, but I have two variables. So I want to make some sort of substitution. And that's where the surface area information is going to come in. So surface area is like all these faces that we that we have and we want to find the area of all those faces. So um, I have the area of the bottom. So that's going to be X times X. So let me write area is equal to um, X squared plus and then I have these four faces on the outside of the square. So I don't have that top box. So I'm not going to do two X squared because I only have that that bottom base. And then the four faces is going to be uh, length times width. So that's going to be X times Y and that's four of those. So I'm going to go four times X Y. All right. So I know that the surface area is going to be 108 square inches. So I want to go 108 equals x squared plus 4xy. And since I want to solve for one of these values, um, I want to produce the maximum volume. So I know I'm going to go back to V, but as, as I'm looking at the values in uh, what the equation for area that I have, um, the easiest value, the easiest variable that will be that I can solve for is going to be the y value. So I'm going to solve for y. So I want to go all right, so 108 minus X squared and divide all of that by four X. Okay, that is going to get me Y. So now that I know what Y is, I can come back and I can make this substitution right here and I can substitute it in for my Y value. So what you're gonna notice here is that these problems require a lot of work and there's gonna be a lot of tediousness. And I've said it before, calculus, we haven't even done calculus yet. It's all the algebra steps, that the difficult work about all the stuff that you need to keep in mind. So I'm gonna make this substitution. So, all right, so let's go V equals X squared. And then my Y value is gonna be 108 minus X squared over four X, okay? All right, so I need to find the volume here and I'm gonna distribute the X squared. So then um, I'm gonna get, let's do 108 divided by four. So that's 25 and then four and four. So that's 27. Okay, and then uh, 27 X because one of those X's divides out with X squared over X. So that's gonna be 27 X. And now I'm gonna have minus X cubed over four. So minus X cubed over four. So that's distributing everything and then what, what do I want to do here? Well, I want to actually bring it over here to the side a little bit because I'm going to need more space. But what I want to do is I want to take that derivative. I want to find V prime because in order to find maximum volume, I need to find those critical values and where are those critical values where the derivative equals zero. So I need the derivative. So let's find the derivative here. So derivative of 27 X. Well, that's going to be 27 minus 3x squared over 4. And I'm going to set that equal to 0. So I'm going to go, all right, so 27 equals positive 3x squared over 4. 27 times 4 is uh, 108, because I just did that. So 108 equals 3x squared. And what is 108 divided by 3? I have it written here in my notes, so that's going to get me 36. So 36 equals x squared. And then I want to take that square root. So we'll take the square root of both sides and I'm going to get six equals to my X value. And keep in mind that I wrote six, but when you take the square root of 36, you do get that positive and negative value. I threw out the negative value, uh, the negative six, because we're working with a length. So X represents a length of that box and you're not going to have negative length. So that's why we're only keeping in mind that six value here, because that's the positive length. So, okay, what do I want to do with this? Well, we need to confirm now with the sign chart. So I'm going to come over here 
and I have my derivative, so we're going from zero to infinity, here's V prime, and right there in the middle is going to be positive six. What values between zero and six can I use? Okay, I'll throw a one into my derivative. So I'm gonna get 27 minus uh, three times one squared over four. So 27 minus three fourths, you know, that's gonna be a positive right there. And then let's throw in a value greater than six. I'm gonna throw in a hundred. So 100 squared times three, um, wow, that's gonna be a really large number. So 27 minus a really large number, uh, that's going to be negative value. No matter what, anything greater than six is going to come out to be negative. Okay, so we know here, what can we say? We can say that volume is maximized at x equal to six. And the reason we know this is because V prime changes from positive to negative. But I haven't answered fully the question. We know that it's a maximum volume. We can back it up. We've done the calculus, but what are the dimensions? So we know that six inches, right? Cause we're working in inches. So six inches by six inches by well, what is y? Well, we can substitute it into any of our equations. So um, I have 108 equals x squared plus 4xy. So let's let's kind of solve this here real quick. Um, and it's right above me, you see it, that area. So, okay, I'm gonna write 108 equals x squared. So six squared, that's 36, plus four times six, that is 24y. All right, so 108, minus 36, what do I get for y? So then 108 minus 36, that's 72 equals 24y, and 24 goes into 72 three times, so three equals my y value. So I know that the dimensions are six inches by six inches by three inches. So what is the volume? What is the maximum volume that we can get out uh, using those dimensions. Well, we can just use that volume equation, x squared times y. So six squared is 36 times y, which is three. So max volume is going to be, so six times six times three is 36 times three, which is 108. So 108 cubic inches. And sometimes that happens that the volume is gonna come out to be equal to the surface area. But of course, if we had a, a top on this box, the surface area would have been a different volume or a different value, sorry. So we want to keep in mind that yes, these problems are going to take a lot of algebra. The calculus isn't really any different than what you've done. You are just finding the maximums or minimums determined by how the question gets asked. So go ahead, stay tuned for the next as we are going to start to tackle um, the next three examples, example two, three, and four, and then uh, we have a couple more videos after that. Of course, if you don't understand any of the work that we have here, make sure you reach out to me so that I can help. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this was Mr. Hernandez Teachers.